Whatever happened to Yuri Andropov and Konstantin Chernenko? Was Khrushchev shot or is sent to the gulag on his downfall? Why was the USSR's economy crumbling during the height of its military power? These and other questions will be answered right after this. I am Professor Jerome Arkenberg, and I've been teaching a wide variety of history courses at colleges across this country for the past 30 years. In this video, I'm going to tell you about the reaction to all those years of Stalinism. Russia under Nikita Khrushchev, and Russia under Leonid Brezhnev, Yuri Andropov, and Konstantin Chernenko. At the end, I'll have the wrap-up quote on this video. But first, make sure to click like, share, especially subscribe, and that little bell thingy, so I can continue to bring you more great videos just like this one. Lavrenti Beria, shown here, the man in the middle, took over after Stalin's death. But by June of 1953, after only a few months at the top of the USSR, Beria, whose liberalizing policies were considered dangerous to the state, was arrested, then shot later that year. Georgi Malenkov, born in 1902 and died in 1988, shown here on the right, Allied with Nikolai Bulganin, born 1895 and died in 1975, shown on the left, took over. But infighting in the party continued over control of the party and the state. Eventually, by 1956, Nikita Khrushchev, born 1894, died 1971, emerged in control of the Communist Party and in 1956 made a sensational speech at the 20th Party Congress denouncing Stalin's misdeeds, beginning a move away not just from Stalinism, but totalitarianism. Khrushchev's speech had two immediate and quite unintended consequences. First, the June 1956 uprising in Poland, which had to be crushed by the Red Army though it led to the end of Stalinist repression and collectivization in Poland. Second, and far more serious, the 1956 October Revolution in Hungary, leading to a Soviet invasion crushing the rebels in weeks of bloody fighting, and the flight of over 200,000 people, plus the loss of goodwill around the world. So, in 1957, the Stalinist Old Guard, Malenkov, Bulganin, Molotov, Paganovich, Voroshilov, and Shepilov, all shown here, attempted a coup against Khrushchev, which failed, leading to their expulsion from the party, but not their deaths, and Khrushchev's supremacy. At home, Khrushchev began easing central planning in agriculture and industry, loosened controls on education, built new polytechnic universities and housing, 
released millions of political prisoners, began a series of cultural and sporting exchanges with the West, including, of course, participation in both the Winter and Summer Olympics. Plus, of course, a space program. But these contacts with the outside world and the slow delegitimization of the Communist Party from Khrushchev's liberalization opened the Russian people's eyes to the material prosperity of the West and its openness and free speech, despite Soviet propaganda to the contrary. Foreign policy failures, such as the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis and Khrushchev's increasingly erratic behavior led to his downfall in 1964, when a coup replaced him with the three men shown here. Alexei Kosygin, born in 1904 and died in 1980. Nikolai Podgorny, born in 1903 and died in 1903, 83. And Leonid Brezhnev, born in 1906 and died in 1982. Under Brezhnev, the main man in this new Troika, Soviet troops invaded Czechoslovakia in 1968, when liberal reforms led Brezhnev to think that country would leave the Warsaw Pact. War with the West was narrowly averted. By the 1970s, the Soviet Union was in trouble. Its standard of living was low for an advanced industrial economy, as half its people earned less than $10 per month. Dissent was rising along with corruption. Its people led the world in alcohol addiction. More Russians died than were born, and productivity reached critically low levels. As the saying of the time went, they pretend to pay us, we pretend to work. The Soviets spent colossal sums on armaments, some 25% of their gross domestic product, versus, let's say, America, which spent a mere 4% of its gross domestic product and still was able to match Russia in military supremacy. Meanwhile, the Soviets also had to dish out tons of rubles supporting communist allies such as North Vietnam, Cuba, and North Korea, and communist freedom fighters in Asia, Africa, and Latin America, along with having to jam broadcasts from the BBC and the Voice of America at great expense. Worse, Soviet agriculture had become so inefficient that the state could not feed its own people and was forced to spend enormous sums to import grain from Australia, Argentina, Canada, and America, draining the country's gold reserves. Meanwhile, under the Thatcher-Reagan reforms, Western economies surged, leaving the Soviet Union far behind made worse by the West increasing technological and computer advances, all of which destroyed communism's appeal outside of a few leftist and college professors. In 1982, Brezhnev, the last of the Troika that took power in 1964, died and was succeeded briefly by first Yuri Andropov, born in 1914 and died in 1984, and after Andropov's death by Konstantin Chernenko, born in 1911 and died in 1985. The wrap-up quote. Stalin acted by imposing his concepts and demanding absolute submission to his opinion. Whoever opposed him was doomed to moral and physical annihilation. He originated the concept enemy of the people. This term made possible the usage of the most cruel repression against anyone who in any way disagreed with Stalin. He showed in a whole series of cases 
his intolerance, brutality, and abuse of power. Instead of proving his political correctness and mobilizing the masses, he often chose the path of repression and physical annihilation, not only against real enemies, but also against anyone he pleased. The cult of Stalin acquired such monstrous size because Stalin himself supported the glorification of his own person. His short official biography is an expression of the most dissolute flattery, making a man into a god, transforming him into great leader, most wise strategist of all times and nations. Nikita Khrushchev, 1956. Let me know what you think of this quote in the comments section below. Also, what you liked about this video and what other historical topics or subjects you'd like to see in future videos. Be sure to click like, share, especially subscribe as it will help me bring you more great videos and click on that little bell thingy so you'll know when the next History Waits for No One video is posted. If you want to know more, there are recommended studies on this topic in the description below, along with other ways to connect with me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the past.